I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm sitting here with TJ Adesola, U.S. Sports Twitter. Yeah. We're in the middle of the U.S. Uh, Women's World Cup, yeah. U.S. Women's National Team doing well. Got WNBA going on right now. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys are approaching women's sports and amplifying that conversation. Yeah, man, we're super excited about the Women's World Cup. I just got back from Paris and I got to watch the magic in person and it was super special. Uh, that is arguably the most dominant team of any sport in the world. And we have the pleasure of seeing them don the red, white, and blue. Uh, but I think it's, 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 it's indicative of a larger sports strategy that we have in place. We realize that women's sports uh, have a hyper-engaged audience, particularly on Twitter, but oftentimes the content is underserved and underdistributed. So we've really leaned into our partners at the WNBA, at the National Women's Hockey League, at Fox Sports with the Women's World Cup to, to really amplify this platform and make sure that if you're a women's sports fan, which is not a monolith, that you have access to that content, particularly on, on Twitter. There's a lot of you know, brings in some social issues on top of sort of the sports issues when it comes to women's sports. I mean, on a platform like Twitter where conversation can go all over the place, yeah. I mean, how much are you seeing about, you know, people want to talk about what Megan Rapino did versus what people are talking about what the women's national team is going for with equal pay and, and diversity and some of the things like that? Yeah, it, that's the beauty of Twitter, right? You get to see every side of the conversation. So we're seeing people have really, really um, critical and, and in-depth conversations about women's sports at large. But what I love to see and what we're seeing a lot of is people are just waving that flag, man. People sure. are ecstatic to cheer for one of the best teams in the world, uh, in all of sports. So we're most excited about that. We, we had a press conference for the U.S. Uh, women's national team here a few weeks back right before they left. And the energy was palpable, man. Uh, people were super excited to cheer them on. And I got to, again, see that in the flesh in Paris. Sure. And uh, the energy was just as high, if not higher. Like you said, you guys are working in depth with Fox Sports again, mm -hmm. obviously with the Men's World Cup last year and Women's World Cup this year. Take me through a little bit of some of your strategy and approach with them to amplify that event and, and you know, really sort of be in concert with what they're doing on the linear broadcast side. Yeah, in a perfect world, all of us, including you and I, would be in France, drinking rosé, <laughs> eating some croissants. Sounds and great, watching, I wish. And Let's watching do it. The game. I should have brought some croissants yeah, here, good. actually. Tickets, let uh, But we realize everybody can't make it there. So for us, um, the objective is to work with Fox Sports or the rights holder in that particular instance to create that experience on Twitter. What does a full, comprehensive, immersive experience in and around the Women's World Cup look like on Twitter? Uh, as a result, every single goal that's scored in the Women's World Cup will be published on Twitter in real time, right? So if you are a fan of the property, you don't have to miss any goal. Additionally, we have a live show that Fox is producing. It is kick-ass and it is occurring right in front of the Eiffel Tower. So it really makes you feel like you're in Paris for, for the game. So that's really our objective. You can't make it, you can't get that flight out to France. We will give you a taste of the Women's World Cup in your timelines each and every single day. So a platform like Twitter and, and a social strategy seems like it's becoming more and more part of the business case for a property like Fox or a broadcaster like Fox or teams or leagues. I mean, what are some of the things that, that you're hearing from those properties as they look to develop a following, they do look to develop deeper engagement with fans of whatever they are uh, through through Twitter and through services you guys have? Yeah, I think it starts with the fact that, and I, I don't say this lightly, like those guys are our homies, like across all of the sports landscape. And I, I think if you're to build a true partnership in every meaning of the word, you have to you have to understand what their objectives are. You have to understand what their needs are, and you have to have uh, an aligned goal or aligned goals. So our first thing is we sit down and we say, what are you looking to achieve? As you know, working so closely in the sports space, everybody has different objectives. A few of the common ones that we're seeing are, are we want to drive distribution, we want to reach as many eyeballs as possible, and we understand that some of those eyeballs may not be consuming our property by way of traditional broadcast or traditional linear. So how can we leverage Twitter to augment uh, those initiatives that we have on broadcast, or how can we be a complement to our broadcast or linear initiatives? So that, that has been a primary discussion that we've had with most of our, our rights holders in a world in which uh, television ratings may not be as high, uh, how can we leverage Twitter to engage some of those folks who just aren't consuming our, our content on, on television like they, they have been in the past. Yeah. 
some properties like the NWHL where they have their games live on Twitter now. You have some properties, like you said, Fox, that are doing you know studio shows or complimentary broadcasts through Twitter that sort of complements what's on linear TV. What approach, what mix do you think work? Is it a little bit of everything or uh, do you see a future where more games maybe show up on your guys' platform? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, and the, the fact of the matter is everybody's rights are so different, right? Like sure. the, the freedom and the flexibility that the NBA has with their rights may be different than the freedom and the flexibility that the NFL has, right? So it really does vary from partner to partner. But one thing is for certain, uh, each of these properties, each of these rights holders are really, really keen on building deeper relationships with their fans, with new fans, and driving distribution of their content beyond their traditional owned and operated properties. Sure. When it comes to deepening that relationship with a fan and, and really creating that bond, is there is there one tip you might offer to properties that are trying to figure this space out or really are trying to go to the next level in terms of what they're doing on, on Twitter? Yeah, I, I think two things, authenticity, right, and differentiation. So uh, growing up as a sports fan, I remember uh, opening the newspaper, I'm aging myself, jeez. <laughs> I remember looking at box scores and newspapers. Sure. I remember going on ESPN.com and checking out box scores. But I'm realizing that the game has evolved beyond just how many points did such and such score. It's look at the colorway of his new shoes. It's what is he listening to in his Beast by Dre headphones. It's the walk up. Uh, ESPN and Wright told us, capture the walk up footage each and every time before a game. And I think that's uh, emblematic of what we're seeing in the marketplace and in the sports landscape. People want a holistic story. People want to know what these guys listen to, what they do in their free time. The night of the NBA draft, Dame Lillard and Marvin Bagley get in a rap battle. And that conversation unfolds on Twitter. We get new songs from rappers that started by way of a conversation on ESPN, right? And again, the conversation unfolded on Twitter. So people want to, to, to feel that relatability with athletes. Uh, and I think these rights holders have a really unique opportunity to tell deeper stories to help you and I feel like, and I actually relate with that guy, yeah. other than the fact that he whipped my ass in basketball or football. <laughs> so we're at the, uh, I guess to wrap up, we're, we're at the midpoint here of 2019. What can we expect from Twitter through the rest of the year? What, give us some of the highlights that are to come, what should we be paying attention to as it relates to what you're doing? Yeah, man, we, uh, we're really leaned into this idea of being the global virtual sports bar. Um, you, 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 from the comfort of your own couch or home, you can sit and consume a live game with hundreds of thousands of friends across the globe. They may be cheering for the same team, they may be cheering against the same team, it might be Woj dropping Woj bombs and Shams dropping Shams bombs, but uh, you have the opportunity to exist within this virtual sports experience. So we're gonna continue to fuel that, that open bar. Uh, we're gonna continue to make sure there's top shelf inventory in that open bar. So the back half of the year, we're, we're having some really cool conversations with the NFL uh, around what our live content will look like this year. I don't wanna to, 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 to drop any spoilers, <laughs> but I'm really excited about what we've got in store for our NFL and with the check down property of those guys this fall. Uh, we're already talking about Olympics 2020. NBC is a great partner of ours, so we're exploring what a deeper partnership could look like there. And then, of course, you've got Anthony Davis in, in, in Los Angeles alongside LeBron. So having those conversations with the NBA, um, we're in the heart of the WNBA NBA season right now. So really working with them to, to tell those amazing stories that exist with those players. Uh, and with Adidas, we've got a really cool women's sports high school initiative that we're going to continue to roll up our sleeves on and dig deep in. So uh, again, fueling that, that virtual sports bar and ensuring that uh, the conversation isn't a monolith, that it isn't just men's sports or, or NBA and NFL, but it does span the gamut of the wonderful world that we call sports. 